Hi, my name is Michael, and today I wanted to make a video of uh, the Torin Shroud. Um, that's an interesting subject about the Torin Shroud. Um, is the Torin Shroud really the image of Christ, the cloth that was wrapped around Jesus Christ? I wanted to uh, go in to show some videos about that, and then um, if you want to leave any comments after the video, please leave so below. But here's the video. Uh, that you might find interesting. Okay. Is the Shroud of Turin really the burial cloth of the Lord Jesus Christ? Hey yeah, guys, was this the actual cloth that Jesus was wrapped in after he was crucified? Now this is a fascinating subject, and there have been some amazing breakthroughs in understanding the Shroud. So let's go through some points, and then we'll talk about it. So, what time period was the shroud from? Because there's a lot of controversy about this, saying it was a clever forgery uh, from the 13th or 14th century. Now, this headline is from the Telegraph on April 2009. It read, uh, Turin Shroud could be genuine as carbon dating was flawed. So, uh, radio carbon dating carried out in 1988 was performed on an area of the relic that was repaired in the 16th century. So the age we produced was inaccurate, said the leader of the project. And then he went on to say, I'm coming to the conclusion that it has a very good chance of being the cloth that was used to bury the historic Jesus. And guys, this is coming from a man who dismissed it uh, as a kind of forgery back in 1988. So please bear that in mind. Okay, a few years later now, uh, March 2013, another headline from the Telegraph, and it says, uh, Turin Shroud is not a medieval forgery. Experiments conducted by scientists at the University of Padua in northern Italy have dated the shroud to ancient times, a few centuries before and after the life of Christ. So the time period is now correct. Okay, next point. Is the blood on the shroud real? Well, this headline broke only last year, July 2017. And it says, Turin shroud is stained with the blood of a torture victim, new research shows. The blood contained high levels of substances called creatinine and ferritin found in patients who suffer forceful traumas like torture. So this is the blood of someone who had suffered severely, like Jesus did when he was flogged and nailed to the cross. Okay guys, next point. Where did the image of a man from the shroud come from? Well this headline is from the National Geographic in April 2015. And the headline says, Why Shroud of Turin's Secrets Continue to Elude Science. And in part of the article, it talks about how the image of the man was produced, and it reads, Every scientific attempt to replicate it in a lab has failed. Five years of experiments, guys, five years of experiments were conducted using state-of-the-art lasers to train short bursts of ultraviolet light on raw linen in an effort to simulate the image's coloration. But they were unable to match all the physical and chemical characteristics of the shroud image, nor could they reproduce a whole human figure. And this bit is really important, guys. The ultraviolet light necessary to do so exceeds the maximum power released by all ultraviolet light sources available today. It would require pulses having durations shorter than one forty billionth of a second and intensities on the order of several billion watts. So this light source which put this image onto the cloth was incredible and it is beyond our capabilities. It so some interesting facts there about uh, the Torin Shroud and uh, how lately it was carbon dated to be at the time of uh, Jesus' death. There's also some other interesting facts about the Torin Shroud also in this video. I'll leave the link also for the complete video as well below. But I found this also very interesting too. Uh, have a look at this. from August 1999. It's a bit of a strange one. Plants shed light on Turin Shroud. Uh, the Shroud of Turin could 
genuinely be the burial cloth of Jesus, according to analysis of pollen grains taken from the controversial relic. And it says they could only have come from plants growing in a restricted area around Jerusalem and could date back to Jesus' time. And a type of pollen from a thistle near the shoulder of the man's image on the shroud was believed to have come from the plant used for Jesus' crown of thorns. And finally, guys, the last point I want to make, the crucifixion of Jesus. The shroud shows marks at the lower part of the hand into the wrist where the nail would have entered when Jesus was crucified. It even shows a mark indicating a wound on his side, and Jesus' side was pierced with a spear by a Roman soldier. In addition, there are markings on the man's back, or Jesus was flogged before he was crucified. And all these are consistent with the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Okay, and that's not all. Uh, other scientific research have found other things that point to the torn shroud actually being the burial cloth of Christ. And here is the other video as well. Um, let me show part of it, then pause it, and I'll show the other part of it. Wait one moment. In the area of the neck, we found an oval-shaped object of about 11.5 by 5 centimeters showing on the surface in relief what appears to be three Hebrew or Aramaic letters. The letters used in both alphabets are similar. Pursuant to this finding, we did two follow-up studies. You can see under the beard, in a hologram, one, two, three shapes. Here you can see them again. This is the shape of something, one, two, three. And on this photograph, it is pretty clear. One, two, three. We see the shape of an object. I was so the scientist found um, a 3D sort of image under, around the beard of uh, the image of Christ on the Torrent Shroud. And then it, after research, they found that the letters, they were, made, they were Hebrew letters. And let me show more of that video. Hold on. So the letters are seemingly in relief like this. The three letters were identified, reading from right to left, as one does in Hebrew or Aramaic, as Ayin, Aleph, and Nun. Now, calligraphy used to be my hobby. And as the letters of these alphabets are written in calligraphic form, in the past, I used them many times to exercise my calligraphic skills. So I was very familiar with the shape of the letters. That's why I recognized these letters, because normally if you don't know the alphabet, you wouldn't even recognize it. However, I do not read Hebrew or Aramaic, so in October of last year, being in Jerusalem, I consulted experts in Old Hebrew and Aramaic. They showed me the two most consulted Hebrew and Aramaic dictionaries, a comprehensive etymological dictionary of the Hebrew language for readers of English by Ernest Klein, and a dictionary of the Targum, the Talmud Babli, and Yerushalmi, and the Midrashic literature by Marcus Yastrov. And there it says in Hebrew, small cattle, sheep. In the other one, small cattle, sheep or goats. In Aramaic, this word is pronounced as an and means the lamb. An example of that is, for example, in the translation from Hebrew to Aramaic of Psalm 119, verse 176, Ibn Ezra, famous uh, translator, translate this word as an, meaning the lamb. So I found that quite fascinating, that uh, the image they found, the holographic image, uh, when they translate it it, it, it means the Lamb. And Jesus is the Lamb of God, as it says in the scriptures. Let me just read that quickly. We see in John 1, 29, the next day he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Um, so that's one of the scriptures, and there's other scriptures as well regarding uh, reference to Jesus as the Lamb. 
so anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video about the Torrent Shroud and um, just shows uh, more genuineness and that, that Jesus Christ was a real person that existed and uh, died for our sins. So anyone out there who still hasn't come to Christ, please do and repent as uh, um, the second coming is very near. God bless you all and goodbye.